Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> What's going on? Nothing. What's going on with you? I am feeling good today. You look great. Thank you. You're yes, so I'm sorry. I was getting my India all real. <laughs> you know, a little strength, courage, and wisdom never hurt anybody. Can't go wrong with her, right? <laughs> At all. Well, welcome to The Heart. Thank you so much for joining us today. How you feeling? I feel good. Yes. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, it's my pleasure. You are amazing. You are one of the best, best to watch right now, rising stars in the uh, film industry. You are doing your thing, staying active, staying relevant. And I mean, just watching you, even like on The Vampire Diaries, supposed to have just one one scene, one, one, one episode, <laughs> and ended up having a recurring role. But yeah. you know, that just means favors on you. So, yeah, well, God did that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you bounced around a little bit, LA, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, but where, what do you like best? Because both are Hollywoods. Uh, what, do you, what do you like best right now? I mean, I love Atlanta because I'm from here. You mm -hmm. know, I was born and raised in Atlanta. So I think I love it here because my family's here. Like, most of my family's here. But I also love L.A. because I met a lot of really great people out there. And I have a strong family base there, too. I just don't have my parents there. So if I could move my parents there, I would probably <laughs> move back. But they're not going anywhere. So. <laughs> right. Because you, you have a brother over there, right? Mm hmm I yes. do. Aren't they he's also in an entertainment? Actor. They're in the yeah, Him, um, his wife, and his sons are all acting right now. Man, you just, it's just in you. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. we had somebody on from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Aren't you, isn't your dad a uh, Bama, Bama guy? Yeah, my dad's Alabama. He is. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> he's from what, Montgomery. What brought y'all to Atlanta initially? Uh, my dad and my mom, after they got married in the Philippines, they moved to Atlanta because my dad was stationed in the Philippines when they were married. And so then they moved to Atlanta after they got married, and they've been here ever since. Ah, so you are here as a byproduct of them, but has it felt good to grow up in Atlanta's southwest side, right? Yeah. How do you know all of this about me? This is really weird. <laughs> I, am I not supposed to do my homework? I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, no, I am totally from the SWATs. Yeah. That's I love me. it. <laughs> a lot of people don't know a lot about me in that way, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I love that about you, you it, because you come off as a very uh, put-together person uh, in mm -hmm. all of your presentations everywhere, whether it's uh, even you have blood and, and dirt thrown on you, you still, uh, <laughs> you still come across. I love that, too. Yeah. That was like the most fun job. I ever. <laughs> you <laughs> still was, have this air of class. It's not dirty enough. And they just were throwing dirt in my hair. And it was my hair. So it was like, once I got back in the trailer with the hair people, they were like, oh, my God, they got all of this blood and all this stuff in your hair. So they literally had to wash my hair get the everything out it was so much fun i have i haven't had video from it but you have you had a whole team working on you so that was that was nice it was great that was, that was real fancy <laughs> what has been your favorite set to work on not to get you in trouble with anybody else but you know your favorite set well i have i've truly been blessed to love all of my characters and work with some really amazing people but I mean, honestly, I had the most fun, I think, on The Vampire Diaries because it was so different. You know, yes. every other role that I play, I'm a, a news anchor, I'm the, right. the wife and, you know, those things where I had to be put together the same way that people expect me to be. But on there, yeah, I was put together in the beginning. But then in the end, I have all this extra, you know, attention to being not so cute. Yes. <laughs> you know? So I was like. Ah, they're like, okay, she needs dirt on her face. So they're putting dirt, literally like dirt on my face and and twigs and stuff in my hair. And it was the best thing. And then squirting blood. They're like, no, she needs blood, more blood on her neck. It was great. I loved it. So I just had a great time with them. They they were a really great team. But all of the all the people I've worked with have been really great. So I've been very fortunate. You you've literally popped up and are now on everybody's radar. Uh what do you think attributed to that rapid jump up. I know you were doing things in LA, you were doing like print and you were on billboards and stuff, but but here in Atlanta, you really took off fast. What what do you attribute to that? Uh, fate, 
you know, it was all God because I made a huge decision to just leave there. Like one yes. day, it was a lot of stuff going on at home with family and I was going back and forth between LA and Atlanta. Like mm -hmm. in one year I made a medallion because I was going <laughs> wow. back and forth so much. And my friends there, they were like, you're gonna move back soon. We already know it. Cause you just keep going back home. And I was like, what, you think I am? And they were like, yeah, I think so. And then literally I made the decision one day, literally, and was like, I'm moving back home, mom and dad. And they were like, when? I said, in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I already gave my note, cause I knew that my lease was up. So I gave up you know, my condo out there because I was running a condo and I came home and God, as God would have it, it turned into, you know, a bigger career than I ever expected because I, I put certain things first, you know, things that matter to me the most, which was my family. I just said, you know what? I don't care. I need to be closer to them. And so I moved home. I love that. Well, family is important, and you, you're fortunate now. You have your parents and grandparents still with Well, you. when I moved home, I had all of them, yeah. Okay. But okay. I did, and that's why I was so, you know, fortunate to have moved home when I did, because I did lose one of my grandmothers and a grandfather after mm. I moved home. So I got a chance to spend time with them. And that's why I always tell people, I'm like, you know, you usually have a gut feeling about something. Yes. And you, you don't act on it. You don't know why you're feeling like, oh, I should move home. Is it me giving up? Is it this, that, and the other? No, there's that's some kind of, that's like a nudge. Like, mm -hmm. go home. Because to me, I feel so much better knowing that I spent that much, you know, more time with them when I came home than I would have if I was in LA. And yeah. that's, just who, that's just how I'm built. Yeah. You know, some people can can move without caring about that and that's not a bad thing it's just I can't <laughs> I'm like debilitated if I'm like oh, I didn't do what I wanted to do with that you know and so knowing that I did feels good I still have my my Lola which means grandmother in the Philippines oh. and that's my best friend ever <laughs> and I love she's that. 92 and so yeah I still have my grandmother my parents are still healthy and living looking like they're 50 and, <laughs> and it's all good well, I'm just glad that you had that time. That is so important. When I was younger, we moved my grandparents into our home when I was a kid. So that was one of those. They were able to pass with us. And you, 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 that's invaluable. That, that experience yeah. to say goodbye is yeah. invaluable. So I'm, I'm glad you got that. Um, but we are all saying hello to you. And in the hello, uh, we are saying, why aren't you hitched yet? So... <laughs> <laughs> well, look, has, that is that is what you're supposed to tell me love coach why well, I, am i, I not <laughs> look i don't mind helping out today you know you can use me while you got me on this you know ask me some questions but look, I, I have I, no idea <laughs> i have no idea like he you know either i've met him and he's just not like somebody i thought he was gonna be <laughs> or i haven't met him and he's super slow i really have no idea do you feel, uh, this is the question, when somebody comes to me and they ask me, you know, Byron, what is it? I, I, I haven't found love. I always ask one question. That is, are you ready for it? I am now. Uh, now. Do I, okay. do I think yeah. I was ready for it before? Maybe not as ready as I am now. Uh -huh. I can say that. So what was the change that shifted your mind and your energy into being ready? Well, it's not really, did you say regret? No, no, no. What shifted, your, what shifted your mind and your energy into being ready? Oh, to be ready. Um, I think it's just life, you know? I think, you know, once I got to a point in my life where I was like, okay, I've done this, I've done that, I've achieved this, I've achieved that, and now I think I'm just ready to share that with someone that, you know... I, and because my parents have been together for 50 years. So it's like, I have this model. Hmm, I have a right. model of what it should be. And I don't think it's hindered me. I think it's actually kept me just a little bit more aware of, you know, the fact that everything's not perfect, but you, you know, you grow through these things and, you know, you grow together through mm -hmm. them, you know, cause you have people who get married young, like in their twenties, like my parents and we're with them because we're kids growing up with them, but they're growing up at the same time. So you might think these are huge mistakes and that, yes. oh, well, you know, why did, why did this person deal with that? They were growing up. 
And so now I feel like I've grown. <laughs> and so, you know, if I felt, if I met and when I meet a man who's also in the same place, I know that those, you know, two things will actually be beneficial, you know, for us to both be in, in a level of understanding of, of what it is that we want or don't want or can actually vocalize that. I love that. So, I just so, don't know where he is. I don't, don't know, know where, where he, he is. is. No. So if you, if you could create him like a builder bear, what would he look like, feel like, and sound like? That's hard. I've never gone to build a bear and been able to choose. You know, I go with my nephews in California, Josiah and Jericho, all the time. Uh -huh. They're actors too. And they immediately go to, you know, the youngest one, he's, he's five. And he's like, I want this. It doesn't matter with me or his mom or my brother. Well, what about this? He's like, no, I want this. And the oldest one does it too. And for me, it's like, oh, I think this is cute. I think this is cute. You know, like, I don't really have a type. Mm. So I have things, can I just, of course, that can, matter. Can I, I be very blunt? Matter. Can I be blunt? Huh? Can I be blunt? No, no, no. I'm not done yet. You have to hear my whole story first. No, no, no. I don't need to hear that. <laughs> no, uh, no, I don't need to hear that. I do this enough. I don't need to hear that part. Okay, but okay, go. You said to me just now, and to all of the people watching this, and see, I this don't, real want, I don't want them to see that. That's too real, much. Shay Mack, real Shay Mack just said something. See, that's the problem. Shay, um, whatever. <laughs> that's my friend. She's talking junk. <laughs> no, you have a type. That, that's why I wanted to stop you on and make sure we frame this just the right way because you do have a type. Everyone has a type. Now, if you're willing to go out of your type, that's a different conversation. But you have a type. You have something in your head that you see. You know what gives you that tingle when you see it. When you're scrolling <laughs> on Instagram, you know what makes you go <laughs> and blush. You know exactly what it is. So... Let me rephrase the question by restating okay. the question again. Okay. What's your type? That's the same question. I know. I said I'm going to rephrase the question by restating the question. So what is your type? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I want someone who is loyal, honest, God-fearing, compassionate, family-oriented, um, attractive to me. You know, <laughs> they, 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 but, right. but but a lot of times all of those things can make them more attractive to me. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Absolutely. Um, stimulating conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could go on. All right. But is that really is that really a type? My sister is like on here too. Z Z tennis love is my sister. If you just, <laughs> you just like ask her, <laughs> say, ask, ask her, her who my what yeah, my what, type. What's her type? Right. <laughs> <I should laughs> tell you. you know, I started doing this. So let's do this. I mean, because I started doing this with clients. Go back. If I if I if I would have done the homework before, I would have had you list some of your exes. How many exes have you had? Not that many. Okay, it doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to put it out there like that. But whoever they were listing the attributes of them nine times out of ten you will find in your list of attributes descriptions things you like things you didn't like that normally you have the same types of people even if they're different heights different skin complexions different okay. would you say that's okay. relatively true if you kind of i i would say yeah <laughs> yeah i yeah. would say yeah they, they did have certain similarities mm -hmm. so what i would encourage next is to assess those mark out the ones that are positive mark out the ones that are challenging and figure out why you are attracted to both you think i'm attracted to both the positive and the negative absolutely look wow. if, if they were an x you had to be attracted right the analogy I give, <laughs> the analogy I give, is that love is, your love journey is like a train ride, mm -hmm. and you're on your train in your seat, and you have your ticket, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for someone to get on your love train, they have to have a ticket to get on. No, nobody can enter your life without your permission. True. Okay, so you gave them a ticket for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. There had to be something 
that attracted them enough. And what attracts is both the good and the bad. Okay? See, see people love it on you right now, Reese. This is good for you. People love it on you right now. They love this. I love y'all too. He's, <laughs> he's stripping me <laughs> right now in front of all of you. <laughs> this is the point, Reese. This is, this, is, this is the point. No, you chose to put them there. And this is for everybody listening. When you allow someone in your life, you allow them there for both the good and the bad. Now, look, look, it's you. yes, there you go, you're back. This is positive because knowing the good and the bad about what you're attracting actually helps you because there are some elements that you won't even like about your future husband. Keep that in mind. I'm, I'm well aware of that. I have oh. enough friends that are married that I know that. Good. So if you keep that in mind, <laughs> you, you sounded real hardcore when you said the bad stuff I'm attracted to. Yes, you know me. <laughs> like, like I'll may... find that out later. <laughs> okay. Maybe. You may see it up front and you may ignore it. That's what a lot of people do. Um, um, the positive thing here is if you can assess what you like about both the good and the bad, you can then identify the things that are deal breakers, and the things that are necessities. These are the two things that you must identify to really say, I have types that I like, but these are the things I need. Because a want and a need for who you're going to marry are two different things. Hmm. This is why you have a book. I love it. <laughs> I hate that I missed your you know, book signing. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm, look, you got plenty of time. You're in Atlanta, so we'll, we'll connect. But I, just look, I don't even have any paper. I need to write notes. You, you, somebody, somebody write notes for me. Come on, y'all put notes in the, in the description here so <laughs> we can play, we play this back and she can see this. I'm not kidding. You think I'm kidding. I'm dancing. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure your people would definitely do that for you. This is important. Look, Reese, I, the reason why I went there with you is just because for all of my single people, especially in the industry, it can be so difficult because you don't know why someone is trying to talk to you, right? Like, there's, there's that hint of skepticism about why they like you, you know? Of course, why wouldn't they like you? But why do they no. like you, right? That's <laughs> but the yeah, that part, that other part is, yeah. Yeah. So why wouldn't they? Because look at you, right? I am Reese Odom, right? Right. Man, man, right look, he don't even know me like that, but he does. He knows a lot about me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jakes. Um, <laughs> he put notes in for us. Oh, um, thank you. I know, right? He's awesome. Um, so the thing that you know that you have that makes them attract to you, it could be twofold. It could be that skepticism on top of the of course. The of course with the why. So there's anxiety with assurance. There's confidence, but skepticism. And you got to find how to marry those two with whoever comes in your life. That person could actually be there, but you may be holding them on the skeptical side. Mm. Where, you, where you're like, well, they may want me for a different reason. Right? That's crazy. Yeah. So you want them to want you for Reese Odom, but then you're skeptical because they want you for Reese Odom. <laughs> Leslie and Priscilla, I'm gonna get you for this. Put me on. <laughs> I'm changing your life in, 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 in uh, two minutes. Here. I don't you even don't need have, it anymore. My mind is blown. You don't have love. You don't have love. But you need to watch. Reese gonna be. <laughs> you need Reece to have somebody else press a request at this point because you've already read me. Look. <laughs> I, I'm doing this because you're so amazing and because you have such a career and you said that you're actually ready now, right? Yeah. And so yeah. being ready means a shift, not just in um, what your words are, but actually how you feel, how you think, how you embrace. Uh, it, it, it was a good point earlier. Cindy said uh, that she, if, if somebody wants to be a wife, they have to embody being a wife now. They have to start being the wife figure now, it can't be an act. It has to be who they are. And if you want to be in a relationship, understand the one thing that we all have in common is that we're born single. True. We are all born single. And there's no manual for transitioning into a relationship. And so you have got to do some, some inner work and mentality shifts in order to get into that. So that's why I did that little part. You're amazing, so you can handle it. And uh, it's going to it's do you back. I feel like I 
actually cry right now. Like, I'm on Oprah. <laughs> this is so my God. Right. Oh. Oh. It's all okay. right. It's all right. No, I, I just believe that you deserve the love that you seek and you are worth it. So uh, hey. why not? Why not have this moment if you have the chance, you know? No, I agree. I appreciate you. I have, I have another friend who she's been, like I said, trying to speak her knowledge into me the same way you have she doesn't you know call herself anything you know professional but she yeah. has her own um viewpoint just as a woman you know she's like i'm a woman i'm older than you i've been through this i'm telling you how to do this <laughs> so like i'm hearing all this stuff now so yes. like you said that means that you know like even if the quarantine is preparing me to be you know what I need to be for that to take the time. That's right. To, you know, get ready for that. It could be that. It could be I had a cooking class. I had a cooking class, a virtual cooking class. Oh, can you cook? That was really cool. Yeah, I cooked it and it was good. Oh, are you are you a good cook? I am, sure. Yep. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so you got that one dish under your belt. That's right. Well, it started. And I cooked warm. it again just to make sure it wasn't just the cooking class. I right. cooked it again. I was like, "Oh, I got this." So, what was that dish? So we can all know what to expect. It was like a forget the name. It was like a I don't know if it was. It, it tasted like miso salmon. You know what Ooh. I'm saying? It was like it was like a sauce that we put on it. It was like mashed potatoes and you know fresh mashed potatoes, or you actually do that. And it was like mm. garlic herb mashed potatoes, and then it was um, asparagus. It was really good, like, and all from like this chef from the, the Four Seasons. He was doing it. That sounds like a Reese Odom meal. It's a little, it was little good too. And I took a picture. I have to send you a picture of it. Please I had do. to send a picture to my parents so they could believe I did it. <laughs> I'll be waiting on that one. I will be waiting on that one. I did it. Indeed. You know, um, your friend, I believe it's probably your friend, real Shay Matt. She said, yeah, you got to sure. step out on faith and do something different. Thank you, Shay. She tells me that all the time. Well, that's but she true. wanted to put it out there like that. Yeah, she, she does. She's, she's, she's a great wise. She is wise. Because the only way you're gonna find love is guess what? Go look for it. Mm. Is that is that real? That's real. <laughs> the only way, only way you find love. Love doesn't hop in your lap. You're not. It sad. doesn't knock. It doesn't knock on my door. It does, that's a burglar. <laughs> Do they knock? <laughs> If you hear something go bump in the night, that's a burglar. You have to, for anybody listening, you have to go find it. It's like, a, I always say, uh, life is like a scavenger hunt. Love is like a scavenger hunt, too. It's yours to find. It's there. It's there. Go find okay. it. Look now, Byron. I'm, I'm going to get you. I'll be like, look, I have a love coach. You got a love coach. I'm here for you, Reese. So let me, right let, me, let me leave you alone. I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna leave you alone. Let's talk about your next project. What what do you got going on? What's what's coming up in your world? Well, I mean, you know, the quarantine has put a lot of things on hold. Yeah. I have um, Shay. Will you stop? <laughs> She's putting like crazy stuff in here now. But um, a lot of that put you know a lot of productions on hold. So I had a couple of projects where I was on hold for for television. So. I can't really talk about them yet until we get back in it. Yes. But I will definitely post. Like everybody who knows me knows I will post and post and post. So <laughs> so as soon as I'm able to, then I'll tell you. I'm really excited about those things. And um, you know, you you saw last week I did like a show similar to yours, but it's yes. not, you know, about love like that. It's more just like getting out some type of inspirational stuff for people during this time and, yes. and kind of sharing some things from people that I know in the industry from whatever age to whatever age, how you can really do what you want to do whenever you want to do it, much like love that you're telling me. <laughs> um, but it's called A Piece of Reese. And I didn't do it this week because I had a few auditions and things I had to work on. So I just need to solidify my guests. You yes. know, get my team together like you to go solidify <laughs> my Amazing guests on my team show. Have, yes. Yes. Shout out to Leslie and Priscilla for doing all the work. They are but, amazing. Um, <laughs> you have a great team, and I'm really excited about everything going on for you. Thank you. But, you know, like, for me, it's like, as an actor, we just have to kind of keep 
ourselves fresh and keep our um, our muscles strong and so that we're ready, you know, for whatever is to come next. Because I did talk to a couple of producer friends of mine and they're like, no, we're getting back on soon. And I'm like, you know, I'm ready. And they're like, no, that's what we love about you. We know that. And I was like, well, good, because I need you to make sure I got some work. Make this that is, that's a good <laughs> point. I, I would love to talk about that with you as we uh, move on. What is the best way to network? Because that's what you're doing. That's what that is right there. To keep networking during a time like this for people who are trying to keep the uh, fire going in their career, in their love life even, just what's the best way to keep the lines of communication open? Um, right now, because the only means of communication really is, you know, just reaching out to people you've already met mm -hmm. and or um, and just saying, you know, I hope all is well, you know, stay safe, whatever, in a very genuine way. And then, you know, that either sparks a conversation or at least lets them know, oh, hey, you know, reminds them of you. And then you have the situations where I know a lot of my friends um, in, in the industry right now are doing these um, monologues and, and different open calls that they're having from the casting directors all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you use those things as a means for you to get yourself out there, just like you do social media. So yeah. when they have these open calls and you're able to do it, put out your best work. You know, if they send you sides or, you know, what most people know as a script, but it's really just like an excerpt from the script and you put that on tape, put it on tape the most professional way you can. Mm -hmm. Show them your best self. Um, because as an actor, your, your work is your brand. You know, if you're showing yourself doing unprofessional, like, you know, not enough lighting, not enough this, or, you know, it's, it's a certain way that you, unless you're just so, you blow them away and you're that look that they yeah. want, they're really not going to pay attention to it. But if you can show yourself in the best way, you might be not be right for that role, but they'll put you aside for another role. You know, like, oh, like, let's think about her for that. But, you know, she's really good. Let me let me keep her over here. So you have to always networking wise, make sure that how you're how you're presenting yourself is the best way possible. Just like with, you know, people are in the entertainment industry, you network at business events and you you put on a suit and you, you know, you go out there and you look like you're. Um, you know, you're dressing for the part. That's mm -hmm. the same thing that actors have to do. Let me ask, I, I, I'm glad you said that because that relates a lot to love and how you have to put yourself out there. Um, the same way that people have to have a forward vision about what they want in love, you have to have that in your career too. What is your next place that you see yourself in when you dream during the day, daydreaming or at night? and you put your head on that Reese Odom pillow, uh, what is that, <laughs> just like that, what is, what is your ideal that you see in your future for yourself? You mean period, like work period. or? Yes, period, the work and life. I, I, I truly envision myself having a, an amazing work-life balance. You know, being able to be successful in my acting career and produce and still do things on an independent level but also having the love, you know, of my life and and being able to have kids and all that fun stuff that, you know, I've always wanted to experience in life and just have the whole thing, you know, like that's my vision to be able to succeed, like on a level that is beyond anything that I could ever imagine, you know, from, you know, as an actor, you know, we all want to be series regulars. We always want to be on, you know, primetime TV shows right. on the big screen you know, major motion pictures, all those things. All those things are what I've always seen in my life. But I also want to see and will see the love part and the, you know, the happiness and, you know, just that work-life balance that I think everybody aspires to have. But because we tend to focus on, which I have been for many years, focusing on and trying to figure out this whole work thing. You know, I think I did put blinders on for the other part and thought, oh, you know, I can get to that. Or, or right. like you said, I saw it in a way like, why are they talking to me? Because I do get a lot of people who ask me for things 
like, oh, can you introduce me to this person? Oh, can I go this place with you? Can I go to this red carpet with you? And that's not a problem if we have that type of relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and friendship. It's like, oh, sure, you know, if I can bring you, of course I will. Right. That's just me. But when you have people that you barely know, <laughs> you know, asking you for things, I'm sure you understand that. It's like you want to do, you know, I, I actually give as much in terms of knowledge and information as I can to people for them to be able to succeed and get those things the same way that I did. Because like you said, I was in L.A. I came here right. and came back home and, est and, and established myself here mm. as an actor and as someone yes. for people to and an influencer or whatever on my own, meeting people, talking to people at the red carpets, at the networking events, talking to producers. Mm. Like I said, when I got on the Vampire Diary set, I didn't know that I was going to be a recurring role. I got on the, you know, I was getting shuttled to my first scene for that day. And the writer's like, oh, yeah, did they tell you that we were? Yeah, like I heard the, the what is it, the wardrobe people telling me, <laughs> but I thought they had it wrong. So right. I was just not going <laughs> to say anything. And so then I'm sitting in, in, the you know in the shuttle with the actual writer and it was really cool because in those moments is what you know those are when you have to put yourself out there mm. in the sense that you make sure you remember their name yeah. you make sure that some way you say thank you mm. you know you know my manager in LA um she will tell you like once once we get a good groove in LA, you know, I'm gonna start sending thank you cards to those casting directors out in LA, you yes. know, and establishing myself solidly there because that is the plan. You know, I know that I came back here, but you know, I totally abandoned that life there. You know, I have my friends and my family there, but I didn't keep up with any of that because I was more concerned with what was going on here. So yes. you have to figure out what to do on a on on the whole mm. platform as opposed to just oh I'm gonna stay mm. in the southeast. No, I wanna be nationwide, worldwide. You got this. You got <laughs> this. <laughs> Thank you. I believe that. You are I honest. receive it. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Love and success. Um I just want to thank you for joining us today. You have been uh amazing. You are as sweet as I thought you were and as strong of a woman as I could tell that you were from all the things you've done and the roles you've played. So keep going on and being who you are. And as we close out, I, I'm, I've started doing this and I want to do this with you if that's all right. Uh, closing out with a question. I don't know. I don't know. Let me, let me see what you're doing first. I've already, I've already <laughs> read you, so it's, uh, I can go ahead. I'm going to pray with you. I'll, so, you know, I slap it and I soothe it. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, allow me to pray for you and uh, for what's going on in your life, okay? Thank you. Absolutely. Father, we thank you today for this amazing time of connection and networking, of divine energy, of positive, pure, positive energy that is pushing Reese forward into greater things in her life. I thank you for calling forth the amazing man that she will meet. If he's not already here, send her and allow her eyes to be open to see the truth of who he is. Thank you for allowing him to be positive, to allow him to be uplifting, to support her career, to be a supporter of the home, to be a good caretaker and a supporter of whatever family that they decide to build together. I thank you for her career and for the life that you allow her to live in prosperity and in truth. I thank you for giving her positive roles with great integrity. And it is all of these things that we ask in the name of the Father who is all of love in the universe. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Absolutely. You deserve it. You are worth the love you seek, my dear. And look, we'll stay in touch. Uh, we'll, we'll talk offline about some of the love stuff for you. Um, thank you. We're going to make it work, all right? Yes. Thank you so much. And congratulations on all of your success. And everybody go out there and get his book <laughs> so that you can get First hand, how many books do you have? Let, so let me start there. I, I right now have one. I am about to uh, release one coming up in the next few months uh, called uh, Navigating Your Love Journey, The Seven Oops. Faces of Love. 
Uh, so it's, it's, yes, we, it, you, it will be good for you. But right now, I actually have a course you might want to try out if you go to love.byronjamal.com. Uh, you'll go to my course. It's all about online dating. Love at first swipe. How to okay. find love <laughs> faster and better. So All right. Yes. All right. So check me out. You have to tell some friends. Say it again. What is it? You need to, love you need to first pin swipe. that on so there. Just go to, my, just go to my, um, my website, byronjamal.com. You'll see courses. Byronjamal.com. That's right. You'll find it. Okay. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. This was so helpful in so many ways. Um, thank you just for having me on your show and um, for teaching me a couple things <laughs> in this conversation. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. We'll, we'll do this uh, when, when everything's over with the corona. We'll, we'll get, all get together. Uh, Cindy, you and I, we'll, we'll have a good time. We'll just go out and, and talk about singleness, marriage, and all those wonderful things about love. All right now, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. You have a beautiful day, love. Much success and stay the path, all right? Thank you. Bye. Take care. <laughs>